So what truly ignites an individual you know, to chase a seemingly impossible dream, especially when it feels like the world is just determined to block every step? Mm -hmm. That's really the question we're diving into today. Looking at the journey of Valentina Sarkova, her life is uh, quite the example of this struggle. It really is. Valentina Zarkova, she had this powerful ambition, right, to become a professor. Yeah. And this was in a scientific world where women faced, well, let's just say considerable headwinds. And she did all this while also being a mother. Mm -hmm. Her story gives us a real chance to look at what perseverance actually means. Absolutely. And for this deep dive, we've really spent time with excerpts from Valentina Zarkova, Science Storms and Shining On. Right. Our goal is to sort of unravel her story, the early challenges, the, um, the big discoveries she made, and then that intense controversy around her later work. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, what her life tells us about, you know, tenacity and questioning the status quo. Okay, let's get into it. So Valentina's early ambition, becoming a professor, that was strongly influenced by her father. But you really have to picture the scene back then. Okay. During that time, women in science faced huge societal biases. It wasn't just about how smart she was or the work itself. She had to fight against these uh, deeply ingrained ideas about what women could even do in science. And then, like you said, motherhood on top of that. Yeah. Juggling academia, which is already demanding, with raising a child. I mean, the dedication involved is almost hard to grasp. It really is. The source material mentions this, you know, a young mother, lectures, research, childcare, and often facing skepticism, people wondering if she could really manage both. Yeah, and what's really interesting is this key moment where Despite all that doubt floating around, another female scientist actually saw her potential wow. and stepped up to support her when others, well, they just wouldn't. That says a lot. It really does. It highlights how crucial support networks are, you know, mm. especially for people up against systemic bias. It wasn't just Valentina's own strength, but also someone believing in her when it counted. It really shows how much having someone in your corner matters. And despite all these hurdles, she didn't just keep going. She excelled. Yeah. got degrees in applied mathematics and astrophysics. Right. There's even that detail in the sources about her learning English, like really working hard at it while her child was asleep. Those quiet moments, mm -hmm. that tells you so much about her commitment. It really points to this relentless inner drive. So after those early struggles, Valentina started making her mark. Her first research focused on some pretty amazing things happening on the sun. Like what? Things like solar prominences. Think of these huge loops of plasma erupting from the sun's surface. Wow. And also these super energetic particles that get blasted out during solar flares, these massive bursts of energy. And that research led to something huge, didn't it? That discovery about solar flares causing sunquakes. That sounds incredible. It does, doesn't it? It's a good way to put it. Basically, vibrations or seismic waves on the sun's surface triggered by that energy released from flares. A bit like earthquakes here, but on the sun. Okay, I get it. And discovering that and getting it published in Nature in 1998, that's a top-tier journal, it brought her real international recognition. Right. And you have to imagine, looking at the bigger picture, this wasn't just science. It was huge personal validation after years of fighting to be taken seriously in a field mostly dominated by men. A real turning point for her, you could say. And she didn't stop there. She made that big move from Ukraine to the UK. She did. Continued her research there in solar physics. It just shows her adaptability, her commitment to understanding the sun. Exactly. And, you know, the result of all that dedication and talent was eventually becoming a professor herself. Achieving that goal. Exactly. And publishing over 200 scientific papers, a really impressive body of work. But then things took a pretty sharp and uh, dramatic turn later on. All right. This is where the story gets really complex. In 2015, she shifted her focus presented this new model of the sun cycle, quite different. Mm -hmm. And this model led her to predict a coming grand solar minimum, basically, a period of much lower solar activity. And she suggested this could even lead to some cooling here on Earth. Yeah, that really stirred things up. Big time. Headlines started popping up talking about a possible mini ice age. It absolutely ignited a firestorm of debate. The scientific community, for the most part, reacted with a lot of skepticism, sometimes even uh, hostility, mm. which does raise important questions about how established science reacts when new ideas challenge the way things are usually understood. And the criticisms were specific, weren't they? People pointed to what they saw as flaws in her models, questioned her conclusions, especially when put up against the, you know, the very established science on human-driven climate change. Yes, exactly. And this difficult period 
led to her having some high-profile papers retracted by journals. That must have been incredibly tough. Undoubtedly. The journal cited issues with how data was interpreted, the assumptions in her models, the backlash was severe, some people called her work junk science, and she faced a lot of professional isolation. Wow. But even with all that pressure, she didn't back down. Not at all. The source material really emphasizes how she stood her ground, yeah. defending her research. It's interesting how she saw the retractions, not as fixing errors, but more like um, suppressing new independent thinking. Her conviction, you know, in the face of all that opposition is really striking. It makes you think about these kinds of controversies in science more broadly, because right. whether you agree with her final conclusions or not, her work definitely forced people to re-examine how science treats dissenting voices. And that balance between, you know, healthy skepticism and being open to new, maybe unconventional ideas. Absolutely. And diving into this period shows how her predictions even with all the controversy, actually spurred more interest in that Sun-Earth climate connection. That's a great point. It's like she pushed the research forward in that area, even among those who disagreed with her findings specifically. Precisely. And in that sense, you could argue she's inspired a new generation of researchers to be critical, to question the established ways of thinking, and not to be afraid of exploring ideas that go against the grain. So when we look at Valentina Zarkova's whole journey, what's the big takeaway? Like we've seen, it goes way beyond just solar physics, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. It taps into something really universal about the human spirit, the courage it takes to question things everyone else accepts, and just the sheer grit needed to keep going when faced with doubt and adversity. And connecting this to you, the listener, her journey kind of makes you look at your own life, right? What aspirations, what promises maybe you've made to yourself are still out there. Mm. And maybe more pointedly, how would you react if your own strong beliefs were met with widespread doubt or even dismissal? The source uses the word beacon to describe her life. And I think that's really powerful. For anyone who's ever dared to dream differently or take a path less traveled, yeah. it really hammers home that idea that big discoveries often come from asking what if. And then having yeah. the persistence to follow through, even when it looks impossible. It's a beautiful illustration that progress isn't always smooth sailing and everyone agreeing. Often it comes from that friction, different views clashing, and individuals having the courage to challenge what we think we know. So let's loop back to that question we started with. What drove Valentina Zarkova against all those odds? Mm -hmm. We've seen now it was this really potent mix, wasn't it? ambition from early on, probably a deeply held personal promise to herself or her father. Right. Incredible resilience when facing intense doubt and professional heat and just this unwavering belief in her own research, even when the pressure to just fall in line was immense. Yeah, absolutely. And considering her whole journey, it really leaves you with a big question to mull over, doesn't it? What's that? How might the history of science look different if dissenting voices, no matter how unpopular or weird their ideas seem at first, were always given a really fair, unbiased hearing? Hmm. That's provocative. What discoveries might still be out there waiting just because an idea seemed too radical or unpopular and got dismissed too quickly without the serious, open-minded look it might have deserved? <laughs>